All right, Clay. This is all your fault, after all. Not only did you curse me all those ages ago and cause the game to crash and so much of an amazing day's battle against a predator to be lost, but now you have taken that tiny little no-paw and you have made it so that your grandchildren are all born completely useless to the clan. Oh, I have no idea what I'm going to do with these babies. Oh my goodness, you guys. Welcome back to the Pamera tribe. And we're in a little bit of a pickle, as you guys know from last time. We are constantly having babies born with double no paw. And a lot of you guys are saying that that often happens if you take two creatures, even though I was so excited that the immunity genes on, um, say, Daffodil and Nuta actually were perfect to pass on some of this B and D immunity. And we have some G and H going on over here, too. I was really excited about their immunity and hoping that we would be able to get that fluffy tail in. And yet every time we have Nuta and Daffodil or Daffodil, Daisy have babies, we are ending up with some really unhealthy little ones. So there is some conversation going on in the comments right now, commenting on the fact that when you have two creatures with no paw, it vastly increases the chance that the baby won't just inherit one no paw, but they'll inherit two no paws and end up being quite useless to our clan. This puts us in a little bit of a pickle because if you remember, we do have a prince who is the son of a mother who is really rude ruthless. The queen used to be uh, in charge and she was extremely powerful and ruthless and would just banish anyone who was not contributing at least one piece of food to the clan once they reached adulthood every day. They had to pull their own weight in the clan. And Prince Cuckoo, uh, hi Prince Cuckoo, has always wanted to really live up to his mother's legacy at making the clan stronger. And he realizes that to help the Pamera tribe, he's going to have to keep some of those strict rules. And usually he'd be very very, very busy keeping an eye on the garden clan and trying to bring more farmers or I should say berry gatherers over to the many many berry bushes we have but he's kind of been distracted by the birth of his many beautiful babies we just had little Nuta a beautiful spotty black ram horned child born I'm totally in love with him even if he does have the royal family secret of the hemophilia uh, that he is carrying but he doesn't have uh, any issues with no paw he just had a beautiful, beautiful baby girl named Anari. And I really like Anari. And she happens to have lean body. She has nimble fingers and runner leg. She has normal hind legs. She is kind of a beautiful example of what we are going for in our tribe so that we can be ready to go into the jungles. And then we look over at the, um, the garden clan and they have actually finally passed the level where they're no longer even able to sustain themselves. And I think right now High Prince Cuckoo is so distracted with his beautiful brides and all of the healthy babies that are being born in the royal family, he may not be paying attention to what's going on in the Garden Clan, but the Garden Clan now has one, two, three little babies who are not going to be contributing whatsoever in bringing any any food unless they get really lucky with rabbits. The only thing that Riri here can do is chase down rabbits and that's just because she can smush them. She gets her plus two strength from a big body so she's like chest slamming rabbits and trying to like knock them out and bring them back to the clan. Not sure how that's supposed to help her out. Vanu at least has, I mean he's so pretty too. Isn't he just gorgeous? He looks like a little piece of like a carrot caramel drop or something like that and he has at least the ram horns that he can try to use to chase down food but I think that uh, High Prince Cuckoo is going to start noticing that there's something wrong in the garden tribe there or the garden clan they're not able to bring in as much food as they used to and that's what they're really supposed to be doing they already have a couple no paw diggers who were struggling to bring in their food quota so I think that um, we've got to ask ourselves the hard questions right now, you guys. And I need your opinions because I have seen it in the comments quite often. Should we banish the no paw babies? I want to know what you guys think. I want to see just your thoughts on that. A lot of you guys were so upset when we banished Rosie, even though Rosie was not able to help out. Is she even still, see, she's still in the family tree even. And she was not able to bring in as much food as she needed to. She could have with her digger paws and her strength, but she just never had any luck. She wasn't really very disciplined. She was always having babies without permission. And so 
she got banished by the High Queen. She did. Queen Lamiko banished her. And so many of you guys were so angry and upset. And I don't want to upset you, but we have to look at this objectively. If you were in charge of this clan, what would you do? Would you banish the babies or would you keep them? So I would love to hear your guys' thoughts on that. But I know that High Prince Cuckoo would probably have to banish these babies. And I think that Tata, aka Clay, aka it's all your fault, Clay. I think he knows that. And so we are actually going to have him take his grandchildren and they're going to run for it. So we're going to start moving. We're going to start hoofing it with our little froggy legs, fleeing on frog legs, um, which means we're not really going that fast. But we are going to be going into the high grasses with clay. So. He is going to try to take his family into the high grasses. He's going to try to escape with the three little babies who have been born. And the rest of the family is going to try to cover up for the fact that they have had so many unhealthy babies born into the clan. And hopefully they won't have to be banished. The babies are going to flee up north. And as long as the food stays above 100 food, which is when the banishments start, I think they might be allowed to live out their lives in peace and exploring, maybe even making a convenient path for us. So when we are ready to jump onto this particular transportation spot. Thank you guys for letting me know it is the grassy patch that we move forward to the jungle on. Then, you know, maybe the babies will have grown up and been good little explorers and helped us out that way. But we will banish them if they get to under 100 food because we would have the prince have to send out a guard of some kind, probably some of his children, to chase down anyone who is stealing from the food resources of the tribe and not contributing. And I just imagine that Tata slash Clay would be scurrying up with their weak little babies and the plan would be for the others to bring them food resources and help them survive but they're surviving in secret so we've got quite the twist going on over here. Don't forget we do have a couple healthy members of the clan who will be uh, leaving. We have little Coco. She was actually born um, I think who was Coco's parents? Let's double check because that actually finally worked out the way we were hoping. Coco where are you? There you are. So Daffodil and Nuta were Coco's parents. Uh, Coco, she didn't have any any mutations, so it's not like she turned out to be super healthy with great normal blood clotting, the stinky tail, normal eyesight. The only thing I really wish we could get rid of on her are the webbed hind legs and maybe give her a ram horn and some nice coloring and a lean body. But really, Coco's doing pretty good, and that's what I was hoping for from breeding up in the Garden Clan. But she is actually being sent away from the Garden Clan to hopefully become a future bride of Nuta over here, one of the high princes. So I really should name him. I Nuta. The I uh, prefix in front of a name designates that they're part of the royal family. So little I Nuta here, he um he is expecting a bride because Cuckoo commanded the Garden Tribe, send me one of your beautiful daughters with nimble finger. And originally he wanted that so that he could have a bride of his own, but now he's quite content with lovely Lily, who's also of the Garden Tribe, and lovely Lako, who um, was not really planning on ever being bred because of her no paw and she has recessive short sighted eyes, but she's really uh, done some good jobs. Good job, good job having her babies. So we'll have some more babies with her before she passes away, I think. But enough rambling. Basically, Lily, because she's also from the Garden Tribe, and Coco from the Garden Tribe slash clan. I kind of just use the words interchangeably. Sorry about that, guys. I think they're going to try to have some healthy babies so they can hide the fact that the clan has done so poorly and protect their clan members. Because I think Prince Coco would start being really ruthless, chasing out everybody who couldn't bring in food, and letting other creatures take over, um, take over the traditional garden clan nesting area so that he could have healthy members of his his tribe born. So we'll have to see how that all plays out. That's way enough rambling from me. Sorry about that, guys. Uh, let's move on. We're actually going to start with these two little sick old people. We're going to have little Vanu. He almost made it to the Peace Garden. He gets to settle down right there. And we'll have little Taroku, who I, I'm going to be so sad. Taroku, you had so many more fans than I expected. He's been a fantastic berry farmer for us for so long. A short-sighted berry farmer, so he was never eligible for breeding. That's why he has all red icons on his chest but he did a 
great job. He contributed, even though he couldn't see very well and he never had any children. He did his best to provide for the clan. So I'm really proud about him. I think little Prince Kukuko, uh, Kukuko here, if he can, do you have? Yep, I think he'll go ahead and he'll gather up some nuts and share them with the elders. Uh, even though this one, Vanu, is actually not an elder. He's just a very sickly doubled up immunity um, creature. That immunity stuff really gets you now. All right, and we're going to go ahead and Prince Cuckoo is going to kick this so that Cuckoo Co, his son, can share these. I need to name him I Cuckoo Co so that I can keep a track of who is directly descended. I Anari from the royal bloodline. There we go. And we've got another baby coming in. Um, we don't really need runner's leg on this baby because Lily and Prince Cuckoo both have both paws. What I would really like to see starting to wiggle into the royal family is maybe Big Nose? We can't get big ears because I don't have enough savanna tiles. That kind of threw me. I was not expecting that. So let's see. Normal hind legs is a thing that both Lily and the prince share. So they should have children with antlers. Yeah, I think Big Nose is like one of the only things I really want to fold in. So we'll try Big Nose. Oh, let's do Stinky Tail and Big Nose. That should be fun because they don't have Stinky Tail in the family just yet. So whenever the prince is breeding, then his family gets priority for what goes into the mutation menu. I think Lako will go ahead and we'll have Lako have another child too, just to see. Hopefully she won't have a no uh, a no paw child because that would be a little frustrating. I Nutu here really wants to learn from his father. He is not a cracker, unfortunately. He can't crack open the clam shells. So I'm going to be sending him, let's see, he's good at movement and he's good at berry picking though. So maybe he'll go off and he'll join his siblings with searching for berries. Also, Igretta is ready to have some babies of her own. So she is High Princess Igretta in line for the royal throne. Um, I think Prince Cuckoo would allow her to do a little exploring right now because she is a fantastic berry picker. In fact, I wonder if she might decide she wants to take over this nest up here because it's surrounded by berries and expand the family that way. So, hmm, Greta, who to breed you with? We'll have to look into that in the future. She's very young right now though, so we won't worry about that just yet. We will let her go ahead and do some exploring. Her aunt, La Isanari, is going to continue her wiggling work over towards the Tiger Tribe. Speaking of the Tiger Tribe, the Tia, Tia Mio uh, has now gathered up some meat. We have Tia Anasari, who's quite sickly, unfortunately. And let's see, we've got Kirkirvan. Oh, he's gonna die. We'll let him eat a couple of delicious berries and then settle into the water. And Tiqui, the Tiqui, the leader of the tiger tribe is also about to pass away. All she can do is just hope that one day there will be a, a mate that maybe Kirnu can have. Who is the healthiest one of the tiger tribe? Uh, Kirnu, or actually Titartha, I think. Who is the one we're waiting for? I think we were trying to get La Isanara over here for a very specific creature, but we'll have to see. All right, we're not gonna worry about the tiger tribe right now. We'll let them kind of gather things up as they can, and we'll have little Team Mio gather up this food, and I'll review um, what the tiger tribe is up to and what what like their their collecting abilities and what their genetics are in a little bit. The queen might be able to get a few more clams before it's all over. But yeah, tiger tribe has kind of like fallen out of my consideration for worrying right now because we've got enough drama going on in the garden clan. All right, and then I Ray Ray, who is a bit of an explorer. Ray Ray is born, let's see, he's gonna do a little bit of berry picking here. He's a little bit of explorer. Uh, I don't really think I want to breed him because he does have short sighted eyes and no paw, but I'm happy that he's there because he is a descendant of one of my favorite of the high princes. He was born from I Kukuko? No, no, no. He was born from I Prince Kutanu, and Kutanu was just such a bit of a player prince. He was pretty cool. I'm glad he has some kids. All right, speaking of kids, we do need to have more children. I think that Nuta and Daffodil would be getting a little bit desperate by this point, and I think that Daisy would be feeling a little bit. Bit desperate but we're gonna go ahead and have them have some more babies because the garden clan is not able to have the food output that it used to and they're getting a little bit nervous about that poor violet violet you may end up having to do some breeding but i really don't want to pass on any more digger paw we have plenty of digger paw going on over here and ooh, we need to scooch so that we can get our way over to where some roots are I think these two little ladies, oh no, and she's so slow. See what I mean? Like everybody in the garden clan would probably be banished because of how slow they are and how little they're bringing in. All right, so let's go ahead and see what the royal babies are going to be this time. 
Oh, goodbye, you two. Oh, they passed away. No, no, why are you sickly? Miko, why? Oh, no, she's got doubled up immunity, but she also has a big nose. Oh, little Miko. I think that Prince Cuckoo would be so sad that the, the disease that has infected his brother and took his brother and sister from him at such an early age has also been passed on to little Miko. Oh, I Miko. So she's got the big nose, though. Maybe we'll be able to get a baby out of her before she passes away. Um, she has normal hind legs, thank goodness. She has B&B immunity, so if we find a male who has some different immunity, actually, Ikukuko may be a good pair for her if we could get rid of that no paw. We'll have to see. Okay, we'll have to see. All right, we won't worry about that just yet. And then Mimi, me. That's so cute. She has the royal family issue of hemophilia, but look at this. She has she has two paws. I'm so relieved. And she has stinky tail recessive. So there may be hope for our tribe after all. I just really need to get focused on what we're going to be pecking away at. All right, let's scooch you over here, little Ayanari. And I think your mom will come down here and gather up berries and clams with you. Lily is getting used to living the life of a queen here in the clan. And I think Prince Cuckoo -Coo, uh, or Cuckoo is definitely definitely having to give a little bit more thought now that he's got more children, beautiful, beautiful daughters who would be perfect seers in a different tribe that we had. Now that he's got them born, he has to think a little bit more carefully about how the rest of the tribe is doing. Uh, kind of having babies is one way that Lily is able to distract uh, the high prince from thinking about what's going on in the garden clan. So garden clan, you guys got to run for it. No joke. Like, we're just gonna have Ta-Ta-Ta. Oh, there you go. Come on, Ta-Ta. You can do this. You've got a little bit of food. Ta-Ta and Rimi can at least start. Oh, there's a whole berry bush over there. So at least they're doing something this time around. Ooh, and actually, Raylana has some good movement. So she may end up helping out by providing areas that we can look for food. But yeah, all the little no-paw babies are gonna be running for it. We're gonna send them off into the high grasses. All right, come here. No, Vanu, hang on. We're going to be sending them off into the high grasses. They're going to run for it. Daffodil is going to step over here. Daisy is going to step over here. They feel like they need to have some healthy babies to try to offset all of the unhealthy babies that have been born in the clan before the prince notices. They need to, I mean, he knows they've been having babies. And if he shows up and like there's only like two kids, he, there's going to be some suspicion. So they're going to try to have some healthy children. Let's get the normal hind legs in there. Oh my gosh. And maybe... Should I leave like the picking ability and nimble fingers in there? I mean, everybody says use the runner's leg, runner's leg. It, it replaces no paw a lot easier. Um, there's runner's leg. So, okay, we'll do runner's leg, but I really hate the hind legs. Uh, okay. Uh, all right. I'm just going to, I'm just going to gamble on that and we'll see what happens. All right. And then Nuta... I think he's going to take over this berry bush. We'll have Dukir move. Violet. I wish I knew what I should do with you, Violet. You might have been more useful as a breeder. But we've made my choices. All right. And then Rosie is still able to provide some food at least. Little Coco is coming over and she is going to be introduced to Ainuta. So Ainutu. Uh, and Coco are supposed to be a pair as time goes on. So he has just like like little little children. They have bumped into one another. They were always destined to possibly be mates. That's something that Cuckoo asked of the Garden Tribe. Oh, what's going on over here? I Greta, you've got so many bunnies, so many bunnies. I think that I Greta may actually enjoy how lush the world seems over here. There's bunnies to eat. Let's see, can I find another bunny? Holy moly, there's so many bunnies and there's so many berry bushes. I wonder if Igreta is going to just settle down over here or over here and kind of take these areas over. And I wonder, Greta, what are your your traits? Do I have a male over here who could possibly possibly provide some good genes? Maybe. I'm really struggling. The tiger tribe I'm kind of I'm kind of struggling to figure out what to do with. So we'll see, we'll see. Alright, we're gonna have La Sonara over here. And I guess she might have a baby or two. We might shake things up that way. And little T Anasari is possibly going to pass away pretty soon. How much time does she have left? She has three days left. She's of the Tiger Clan, so we'll just send her over to spend time with her mother. So let's see. We'll have her grab. Mm, I'll just go ahead and have her come straight down. And she and her mom, who look pretty much identical in a lot of ways. They just have different paws. Can go ahead and just look over the peaceful waters. The peaceful waters. But yeah, the tiger tribe, I feel like 
They were a really fascinating holdover from one of the very, very first creatures we had, um, who was one of our rogue females, if you remember her. But I don't know if it's still necessary to keep them going, so we'll have to think about that. We'll gather up some berries over here. There we go. There's Yeah, there's so many bunnies over here. I think that uh, High Princess Greta may be thinking about founding a second branch of the royal clan over here. Especially because her father kind of has a lot of other kids um, who are doing just fine. Alright, so that should be that. Let's go ahead and see what kind of babies are going to be born into the Garden Tribe. We're going to continue to flee on our froggy feet for our lives. The food is thankfully going up high enough that maybe the High Prince will never have to worry about it. <gasps> Holy moly days! Whoa! Okay, if we were the suspicious sort, I think that this is where the garden tribe would, or the garden clan would just go, oh, okay, we're done. We're done. We're doomed. Our children are, are forever going to be <laughs> born <laughs> terrifyingly unhealthy. Oh my gosh. Mila, hello, my little one. Oh my goodness. Um, well, that's going to change things. Mila. You threw me for a loop, my dear. She's got the melanism down pretty hardcore. Wow. Okay. Normal blood clotting. Immunity D and G. She's got normal eyesight. A stinky tail. Webbed hind legs. Nimble fingers. Runner's legs. Big body. Cracker jaw. Um. Whew. Yeah. Well. You know what? Her birth has uh definitely definitely given the rest of the clan an opportunity to start running for it because everybody's going to be super distracted by the fact that uh, a a baby like little Mila has been born. I feel like we need a special name for him, but I feel like Daffodil might be like startled off of ever having another child. <laughs> oh my goodness. But at least we have little Kirnuku over here who's also got like a, 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 a good collecting paw. I'm just, well, okay. All right, guys. Um, that's going to make things a little bit more interesting, that's for sure. Uh, we'll have to see what we're going to do with Mila and what this means for the Garden Clan. Uh, at this point, I wonder if they would just throw all of the nest into the sea. No offense, Mila, just that's kind of stunning. Gracious me. And we'll have to see what we're going to do with, uh, with, with Mila and everybody else next time. Because that just, that just like blasted all of the thoughts out of my head. All right. But we're making pretty good progress. I'm going to start buckling down on really only breeding the best of the best creatures. I don't know about you guys. Let me know. I'm looking over the tiger clan. This little one, Tiana, sorry, is about to pass away. Looking them over and I'm not really seeing any particular genes that we need to go out of our way to try to protect except maybe maybe immunity A. I'm not really seeing any particular traits we really need to go out of our way to protect. So maybe the fact that we had so many unhealthy babies born into the tiger tribe may just kind of cause them to naturally peter out. That's a branch of the extended family tree that may not make it. Let me know what you guys think about that. I don't think there's anybody we need to go out of our way, like I said, to try to snag. Um, except let me see if we have immunity A. Yeah, we do. We have immunity A already hiding in a few of our creatures over here. So we may just kind of let the tiger Tiger tribe turn into a bunch of explorers um, and maybe not really focus on continuing because a lot of their babies are not being born very healthy. Sorry about that. La Azanara might try having a couple babies just to see, just to see what, what comes out. Um, gracious. And then, yeah, next time we come back, well, we've got our frog family leaving. I think that any Nopa child born with double Nopa will just be immediately taken out of the breeding pool. I think that the prince may start thinking maybe he'll have the best luck by letting his children be the ones to kind of have the most babies and, and spread throughout the world. I think Greta is ready to start making her own nest and maybe start her own branch of the family tree. So we'll have to see how that goes. Maybe the prince will, will see the birth of this baby as a way to go, okay, I need to be the only one. My family, the Garden Clan is clearly cursed. And my family is the only one that I want uh, having any more babies. So if only we can get that fluffy tail into the other group. So yeah, I think we're going to be focusing on this group for breeding. And we'll start expanding. We'll start getting some lean bodied, big nose, ram horns, striped with dots or dots. I mean, um, can't get big ears, but we'll get there. Creatures so that we can go to the jungle. I actually think we're a lot closer than we used to be with being able to leave for there. So I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.